signed on to a cruise ship. Um, there is only one American flag cruise ship, and that is the ship I signed on. It just goes around the Hawaiian Islands. That's all it does. It never leaves U.S. waters. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. But anyway, working on a cruise ship. I've only been to Hawaii one other time, and that was on a ship a couple years ago, and only for a few days. So the idea of spending a couple months here, circling the Hawaiian Islands, seemed more like a vacation than work. I usually work on cargo ships and working on this cruise ship was gonna be a bit of a pay cut. But I guess that's kind of the trade-off for living where people vacation. And as for the ship, well, it was pretty much like any other cruise ship. You have the pools, the shows, the clubs, bars, restaurants, the shops, all while stopping in beautiful locations. But what goes on underneath all this, below deck, is something completely different. It's a whole other world. The ship is pretty much a floating city, and like any city, it needs infrastructure. Down here, there's hundreds of people working, eating, sleeping. There's everything from a tailor, a laundromat, waste management station, even water purifiers. To be honest, there's so much going on under the ship, it's kind of overwhelming. And it was definitely easy to get lost. But after a couple weeks, I started figuring it out, learning all the shortcuts. Like any great city, it's the people, the workers, that make the city what it is. I think at the time, the ship wasn't fully staffed. We had about a 600 person crew. Everything from bartenders to office workers, and even ship security. Joe, I told you not to put your name tag on. How many times have I told you? Put your goddamn name tag on. And me? Well, I would be doing what I do on every ship. I would be working on deck, tying the ship up, mooring operations, painting, chipping, random maintenance around the ship, the usual stuff. The one nice thing is, is because the ship was so big and there was so much to do, I wouldn't be standing a navigation watch. We had a pretty big deck gang and the majority of us just did maintenance. So if you didn't realize, the best part about working on a cruise ship, well, surprise, surprise, it's the fact that you're on a cruise ship. Every day the ship was gonna be in some Hawaiian port and we were gonna do two overnights. So there was plenty of time to get off and explore the islands. One of the other perks is that when we're off time, we could actually enjoy the amenities that the cruise ship offers. As long as I'm in the right attire, I can go walk around the cruise ship, go to all the customer areas, the shops, the restaurants, the shows, I can do all that stuff. It was pretty nice. After a long day of work, you can grab a cocktail, watch the band, or if you really wanted to, you could even check out one of the shows. 
working on the ship definitely had its perks, that's for sure. Like I mentioned earlier, the ship is on a continuous loop around the Hawaiian Islands. Um, every week we're going to the same ports on the same days. So let me show you what a typical week is like working in the deck department on this cruise ship. I'll show you some of the jobs we do and what we do for fun. And how it changes based on what port we're at. So yeah, let's get into it. From Honolulu, our first stop is Maui. We head to Kalalui. Every time we come into port, it's always in the morning. So that's always how we start our day, tying up the ship. Mooring operations don't take too long, especially because we're coming to the same ports all the time. Usually about an hour, maybe a little more. Once the ship's all fast, it's just a normal work day. It wasn't uncommon to find us in the engine room, cleaning and sanitizing one of the holding tanks. We worked till about 1700, five o'clock. We could work an extra hour or two of overtime, but who wants to do that when you're in Hawaii? But the nice thing is about Maui, is this is actually the first overnight the ship does. Which means we have time to get off the ship and explore the island. I don't know, it's pretty nice. Some adamame, a flight of beer, while watching football. Not the worst way to wrap up a day. So Maui's kind of known for its wind. So when you get the job of working on the SkyCon on the windward side, you kind of feel like you drew the short straw for the day. In a nutshell, the SkyCon is kind of like a window washer on a high rise building basically this two-story contraption that sits on a rail and allows us to do maintenance on the side of the ship. We've done a lot of sketchy jobs. Being a sailor, but being on this sky con in Maui, on the windward side. Yeah, that's, that's up there. As nerve-wracking as it is, the sky con's safe. Before we take it out, we fill out permits, do inspections, make sure we have the proper PPE. There's a million safeguards in place to make sure nothing happens. But that doesn't change the fact that it still freaks me out being up here.
living now. So this is the longest the ship will be in any one port. We're pretty much here for two full days. But after those two full days, we finally leave and we make our way over to the big island. After we finish our good morning mooring operations, today is actually a pretty important day because today is drill day. So this is the abandoned ship signal, which means everyone heads to their muster stations. This drill isn't for the passengers. This is just for the crew. Because we constantly have rotating guests and crew, it's very important that we practice this every week and the ship takes it pretty seriously. Most of the crew has jobs, whether that's launching a lifeboat, manning a lifeboat, working a muster station. Practice makes perfect and you have to be perfect at your job. And as far as my job, I actually like my job. I was kind of like that guy from the Titanic. While the ship was sinking, everyone was freaking out. And he was the one who had to tell people what lifeboat to go to. Yeah, I'm like that guy. So the muster stations will tell me how many crew and passengers they have. And once I have all the numbers, figure out what muster station should go to what boat. And please don't worry, I'm well aware that these are modern times and that women and children don't go first anymore. The drill takes up most of the morning. Then after lunch, we'll do a little bit of maintenance. Nothing too crazy. Splice a mooring line, something like that. Because before dinner, we're going to push off and leave Hilo head to the other side of the big island because tomorrow is freaking Kona day. Um, yeah, happy Wednesday. Super early. Um, today's the earliest day of the week for me. Uh, today we're in Kona, but we don't more we don't go right in the Kona, we anchor outside of Kona. So we run tinder boats from the boat to uh, to the shore. So all day long, we, uh, we man the boats, tie them up, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's like quarter to six right now. We, we have to get the, get the pier ready. Get the boats ready, uh, get the platform ready. There's, there's a bunch of stuff to do. And then we start running the boats at like seven o'clock. So yeah, it's a long day, but it's a fun day. Kona day. After we drop the anchor, the next order of business is getting the platform ready and launching the boats. Because we're doing this every week and pretty much the whole deck department's helping, the operation goes pretty smooth. Once the boats are in the water and they have a crew, we give them one final rinse. 
Then load the passengers. It only takes about 10 minutes to get from the cruise ship over to the dock in Kona. As many times as I do this little 10 minute commute, it never gets old. The fish, the people, the color of the water, it's all what makes this day so great. As the day goes on, we'll rotate positions. Some guys will go to the dock, some guys will go to the boat, some guys will go to the platform, help stretch our legs, get out of the sun. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Freaking Kona day. Let's go. After a very long but fun 12 hours, we put the boats away and call it a day. Well, I shouldn't say we call it a day because Wednesdays is the definition of work hard, play hard. Because the crew bar on Wednesdays is the place to be. It's Hawaiian reggae night and my boys are DJing. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little weird working on a ship that had a crew bar. I'm definitely not used to that. But as long as you take it easy, the crew bar is a pretty good time. Everybody comes together. The engineers, the dancers, the hotel workers. It's our little ship family. And at the crew bar, we can just kind of take it easy and have some laughs. Coming into Kauai. Seven o'clock in the morning, just woke up. This is the view. All of Hawaii is beautiful, but there's definitely a reason why Kauai is known as the Garden Island.
So today I had the job of repairing all the nicks and dings on the deck up on the crew deck. It's not a bad job. A little tedious, but not bad. You start off by squaring off the damaged area. Then you fill it. Sprinkle some knot skid. Then once it's dry, you sand it down. Like I said, it's a little tedious, but you can't beat the view. It is not too bad working in Hawaii. Not the worst place in the world to work. Kauai is my favorite island, not just because it's absolutely beautiful, but also because the ship does its second overnight here. And there's a bunch of things to do in walking distance in the little town of No Willy Willy. So needless to say, the cruise ship kind of takes over the town for the night. And it's always a good time when you're running the shipmates, especially the dancers. After a couple weeks coming here, kind of fell into a nice routine. After work, me and the boys would grab dinner. <laughs> then after dinner, probably my favorite part of the day, we'd hit the beach. <laughs> and if you were up for it, after that, go to the tavern. The next day is business as usual. We were doing ship maintenance. We were greasing one of the wires for the life raft davit. Sloshing. Pretty chill job. Fridays are unique. Instead of leaving in the evening, we leave in the afternoon. And we head to the other side of the island for the grand finale of the cruise. This is the only time we transit during the day. And it's for good reason. We're gonna catch the sunset at the Nepali coast. Every week, the ship always finishes its cruise by coming super close to the Nepali coast. Obviously, we're still working, but it's hard not to be distracted by just how freaking epic this coastline is. I mean, this is where they filmed the opening of Jurassic Park. Come on. And after a week of circling the Hawaiian Islands, we end up back in Honolulu. It's always a good feeling pulling back into Honolulu. Another week's gone by, we finished a circuit, but Saturdays for the deck department are pretty busy. Cause today the passengers do a turnover. The old passengers leave and there's new ones coming on. And we have a very small window where all the passenger spaces are empty. 
so we can get all the maintenance done without inconveniencing any of the passengers. It's a little hard to fix the deck around the bar when Terry and Cola are throwing back Mai Tais. At so we take no breaks and take a short lunch to make sure we can get as much work done as we can while these spaces are available. And because we work through our breaks, we get a couple hours to go to shore and enjoy Honolulu. Have I mentioned that I have the best job in the world? Hawaii life isn't that bad. This is pretty nice. This is definitely worse places to be than this. And that night we would leave Honolulu and start the whole circuit again. But yeah, that's pretty much a typical week, circling the Hawaiian Islands. It was the first ship I've ever worked on, where I had a work life and a social life. And you know what? It was a fucking blast. After damn near two months circling the Hawaiian Islands, I entered what the crew called my Aloha Week, which is my last week on the ship. You know, coming to these ports every week for the past couple months, you get to know these places pretty well. You have favorite restaurants and places you go. You meet the locals. Thank you. So this being my last week, when we do leave, it hits a little differently. Knowing that I'm saying goodbye to a place that I got to know really, really well. So after my final Kona day, my shipmate Ali, who's from Hawaii, offered to give me a chant of appreciation, also known as Oholi Mahalo. 
Of course I said yes, but I had no idea what I was in store for. When it was all said and done, it was a crazy, powerful, beautiful moment. One that I will not soon forget. Thanks again, brother. Now being in Kauai, my time was definitely coming to an end. I only had a couple more days left. After work that day, I wanted to go into town one last time, visit the beach that was responsible for so many good memories. Say my goodbyes. And maybe stop at the tavern for a drink. Seeing the Nepali coast for the last time on my last night was the perfect Hawaiian send off. It was such a unique perspective, such a beautiful coastline. It's the perfect cherry on top for this whole trip. Or pineapple, pineapple on top for this whole trip. As we came into Honolulu, I couldn't help but think back on the voyage and my time spent here. You know, if I learned anything these past couple months, it's that money isn't everything. Sometimes what you need is a new experience. Go live life a little. And that's exactly what this cruise ship was. Getting to know Hawaii so well, spending so much time here, seeing how absolutely beautiful the islands are. And not to mention the crew. Most people had such great energy, so many laughs, so many good memories. You can't put a price on that stuff. That's what, that's true wealth in life. It was a good story, I guess. A great experience. And that's what this ship was. It was one hell of an experience. You know, this is the first ship I've ever signed off of where I'm legitimately really, really sad to leave. Usually I'm excited and can't wait to go home and all that good stuff, but now I'm actually sad to leave which is a really weird feeling. You know, I only have one last thing to say. Mahalo, pride of America, and aloha. Big thank you to Nips for flying the drone, getting those awesome shots. Also thank you to Alihi for singing that beautiful Hawaiian chant. And of course, thank you to the crew, especially those in the video. Everyone's social media link should be in the description. Go say hi.
Be sure to check out the Slop Chest Sailor Store, see all the new cruise ship stuff we got. And of course, if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to support the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing the video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.